Look. Good morning and welcome to my garden here. Uh, it's a beautiful sunny day, the sun is shining. Uh, if you look in the garden, you can see there are flowers starting to sprout in the background. Beautiful colours coming through. It's a spring day. You might even just be able to hear the birds singing in the tree behind me, just enjoying the beauty of this lovely spring sunshine. And spring is the time when we celebrate Easter and the resurrection. Resurrection is a story and message of new life, of hope, and it's so significant that we celebrate it at the same time as we see new life coming to life all around us. I know that you've been following with Janice a few of the resurrection stories after Jesus was raised from the dead, and we're going to do that again this morning. Hopefully it's one that you haven't yet looked at, but I want to just share with you a beautiful story of Jesus meeting Peter by the lake shore of Galilee. Let me read it to you just to capture the scene. Peter's gone back fishing. He is devastated that he let Jesus down very badly and He's gone back to something that's familiar, something that he knows how to do, not knowing whether he can be restored as a follower of Jesus again. And Jesus stands on the lake shore, calls out to these fishermen and helps them with a huge catch of fish, which they then land on the, sh on the shore. And Peter, comes up and shares breakfast with Jesus along with the others. He's got a fire there and they cook some fish. And then it says this after breakfast, when they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? We're not sure what Jesus meant by more than these, it might have been, do you love me more than these fish that you've gone back to fishing? You remember Jesus had said, follow me and I will make you fishers of men and women. Or it may have been Jesus was saying, do you love me more than these other disciples? Because Jesus, Peter had declared to Jesus that even if all the other disciples abandon him, he will never and that's exactly what he did. So do you love me more than these, the fish or the disciples? Yes, Lord, he said, you know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time, the third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you dressed yourself and you went where you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. Then he said to him, Follow me. This morning, these two or three weeks after Easter, Jesus continues to say to each of us, follow me, follow me. And we are called, like Peter, to continue following him through all the 
ups and downs, through all the good days and the bad days, through all the joys and the disappointments, through all our successes and our failures, through all our uh, joy in life and through all our shame and defeat. Jesus says, follow me. And he promises to be with us as our Lord and Saviour. And so this story helps us to think about our own following of Jesus as we look at what goes on between Peter and Jesus. After breakfast, there is an opportunity for Peter and Jesus to have a very personal conversation. And that conversation involves Jesus asking Peter three times, very pointedly, very deliberately, he asks him three times, Peter, do you love me? And then says, feed my sheep, care for my lambs, take care of my flock. Well, it, it says there that Peter was, was hurt when he asked him the third time because it was so unmistakably clear that Jesus was remembering that in the, the garden of the high priest Caiaphas, where Jesus had been arrested, dragged before the religious officials, false accusation had been made against him. That when Peter was questioned and said, do you, you know this man Jesus, don't you? You're one of his followers. Peter denied it three times. I know nothing about him, not anything to do with me. I don't follow this man. Peter thought he knew himself. He thought he could withstand that kind of temptation. But clearly he didn't know himself as well as he thought. And he let Jesus down very badly. It was a moment of deep shame. He was afraid. All the other disciples had fled and run away. Only Peter had had the courage and bravery to follow Jesus to that garden outside where the trial was taking place and yet he failed and so he uh, abandons the thought that he can be a follower of Jesus and here he is going back to fishing but Jesus comes to him and the wonderful thing going on here is that however painful the memory was Jesus needs to invoke that memory with him again. You see, it wasn't a case that Peter's betrayal could just be ignored, swept under the carpet as if it had never happened. Peter needed to be able to stand before Jesus, to honestly face up to his defeat, his failure, his shame, to be honest and open and humble before God, before Jesus, confessing his failure. And yet, in that moment, to be loved, forgiven, and trusted with something more to do. And that's exactly what Jesus does. He doesn't condemn him, he doesn't destroy him, he doesn't dismiss him or uh, abandon Peter. He deliberately finds opportunity to encounter Peter, to talk to him lovingly and gently, and to restore him again back to the faithful, loyal, courageous disciple that Jesus knew he was capable of being. And so we all need to pause and think about the memory of that story. And I think one of the questions we should ask is, why did this story ever get into the Gospels in the first place? You see, when the Gospels were written, it was many years after the death of Jesus and the resurrection. By this time, Peter had become established as the leader of the church in Rome, the center of the mighty Roman Empire. If you like, in today's terms, he was quite a celebrity. 
he was the leading apostle in the church and at the center of this great city and great empire he led the church so when the people who were writing the gospels wrote their accounts isn't it strange that they told a story about peter's defeat and failure and shame come to think of it who was actually there to know that it had happened in the first place you see all the other disciples they'd run away the only person who was there was peter so what we can surmise from this is that the only reason we know about this story the only reason that the gospel writers included it in their gospel accounts was because Peter told the story again and again and again wherever he went as he traveled from city to city as he shared the good news of God's love and forgiveness and new life so he told the story of what that had been for him the disciple who had pledged his courage and loyalty and had failed at the first hurdle he told it unashamedly he didn't want to stand in his own reputation as if he was someone special he wanted to stand in the grace and mercy of forgiveness of Jesus Christ who could even forgive him for such a devastating failure and defeat and so the Tory the story gets told again and again and again and as they are there by the lake shore so Peter becomes deeply aware that though he has failed and though he needs to confess it Jesus is not concerned with his dismissal his con condemnation Jesus is concerned with his restoration his forgiveness his renewal his strength to go on and pick up the challenge again of being a follower of Jesus and what a remarkable follower of Jesus he turned out to be what Jesus tells him is you will be my follower and ultimately that following of me will even lead to you being led out to die just as I was led out to die what a what a courageous thing to pick up the challenge again knowing that even he also would need to become a martyr for his faith well you know it's it's very unlikely that any of us in this day and age will be called like peter to give up our lives physically to be to be led out to be killed as Peter was killed as Jesus was killed it's very unlikely for us we live in a very different times and culture people are, are much less concerned about the whole thing than they were in in those days but it still is the case that for each of us we need to face up to the ways in which we get things wrong the ways in which we we are defeated the ways in which our best intentions come to nothing and we need to be people who can find in Jesus Christ a loving grace and forgiveness that picks us up again there's a kind of a there's a dying really there's a dying to our defeat and failure and shame that goes on a dying to our personal egos as if we always get it right there's an acknowledgement of our death and shame but there is a standing 
in the grace and mercy and love of Jesus. That means that we don't proclaim ourselves and how great we are. We proclaim Jesus and how wonderful his new life and mercy and forgiveness is. And in the kindness and the mercy of Jesus, we find hope and we find joy and we find new life and opportunity. That's the message for each of us on this Sunday morning. And who amongst us hasn't, like Peter, experienced disappointments, experienced the weakness of our own human humanity, hasn't, like Peter, made a mess of things, got things wrong, made bad decisions and choices. But if Jesus is able to restore Peter, he is able to restore each of us as well. And to send us each day on our way. The Bible says new every morning is God's love. It's, it's like a, it's a fresh new awakening each day when the sun comes out. There is a new day of grace and forgiveness and love for each of us. I love to go to bed at night with my mind just reflecting over the day and recognizing the good things and the bad things. And then when I wake up in the morning, even before I open my eyes and, and lift my head off the pillow, there's that opportunity to start the day afresh with God in the sure and certain knowledge that as a child of God, no matter what the previous day has been, God is with me, God loves me, and he is committed to, by his spirit, giving me the strength to go forward and the courage to make new decisions that are, that are decisions about following Jesus. So, your, so God's blessing on each of us and especially on you as you listen this morning. May God be with you, give you courage, give you faithfulness and give you much joy in growing in your discovery and understanding of the love of God that holds you, keeps you and is pledged to complete in you what God has begun. God bless you and be with you today and in the days that lie ahead. May he help us each as we hopefully go through some more unlocking and get back to more usual ways to be people of faith and courage and loyalty following Jesus. God bless you. Amen.